Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here, spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people. That includes you, every last one of you, realizing and experiencing your dreams here on earth in your present bodies during these days and during these times. <clears throat> I want to take the time, if you will, and talk to you a little bit about the Fountain of Youth. A spokesman and advocate for basic human rights, to be sincere, to be real, not about a job, but a, a pursuit of a desire, a way of humanity that excels all present statuses, wherever they may be, to have this desire to want that, then you can really speak for the people. Basic human rights. And when you recognize what really takes place right in that sphere of activity, you can speak to it. When a baby comes into the world, some of them are just as ugly, little ugly scoundrels. But everybody will say, oh, he's such a joy. Maybe behind your back they'll say, but he's so ugly. Or she's so ugly. And then there are babies that you look at them and you're amazed how handsome they appear to be, how beautiful they are. And they both grow up in the same society that you and I live in and at one point in their lives being that they are healthy and get a chance to live and continue to exist within the society, they seem to even bubble even more, become gorgeous, even though at the same time there are still those who were so ugly in the beginning who are still ugly. But it doesn't stop there. Even the fine ones at a point in life find themselves getting humpback, skin, all of the wrinkles are showing, all of the ugliness that, when I say ugliness, I'm talking about what we have perceived as being beautiful, what represents the standard sense of beauty physically has turned on its tail and is going to the complete opposite. And if it's not headed toward beauty and it's headed away from beauty, it must mean ugly. Now why is it that we get ugly even though we may be beautiful at the birth? Why is it we get so ugly? Why is it that after we grow up and mature and become huskies, divas and all, time we begin to get ugly. Well I got a, an idea why we get ugly and I'd like to share this idea with you. I think we get ugly because we are ugly inside. We are ugly inside. We are so ugly that we are pathetic. We tell ourselves that we are good people. We give to charity. We go to church. We go to community events. We vote. We go to war. We are good people. But from where I sit, I say that we crumble up. Can't get around. Just everything we, <laughs> we always regret it is face right with us, right with us, face to face. And we can't do anything about it. But I believe that if you the people, and I say if because for ever, 
the people have refused to change. But if the people change, then there would not be any ugliness within. And even if you appear to be so destructing from the features you had earlier, you will still be seen as one that is magnificent. You see, what I'm basically saying to you is this. Many people walk around and they live in a tough world. They find some way to adjust. And based upon the principles that they have been taught, they find a way of comfort. They find a zone of comfort, even spiritually, to rest their future souls on. And they feel comfortable with that. And I say they feel comfortable with that because they have no one to teach them better. No one is teaching them better, and so they're living on their own beliefs. If a teacher arose and met the occasion, the student would have to learn, whether they wanted to or not. The student would have to learn because the teacher is genuine. And everything that the teacher does is a lesson. To everybody who ever see it, they can't deny it. So these, making these various decisions, do so because they don't have the example set before them. In my lifetime, I know of two individuals for sure that we all probably are familiar with. That's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. These two men had a vision that they believed was a vision from God. And they held to it even though they knew that doing so if the people did not change, that they would be killed. They knew they would be killed. In order to save their lives, the people would have had to change and what they were trying to accomplish must have been empowered by the people. And perhaps they might have been able to live. But that notwithstanding, these men knew they had to die because they were real, they were authentic. Yes, there were many people died in that same circle during that same time and dying for the same reasons and the same causes. I don't know their names, you don't know their names, but we know what they represent by their voices being delivered through the mass powered individuals of Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Now, I don't know of any other people who have loved you through the power of God in such a way that all they wanted to do was to bring you a measure of understanding about life that produced peace, prosperity, and joy. And they were killed for it. And today there is no one that's standing up ready to die for any belief. They might go out there, when I say any belief, I don't truly mean any belief. There are people who are dying for the state every day. There are people in Afghanistan, there are people in other parts of the world who are giving their lives today for something that they believe to be absolutely true and absolutely necessary. But it is not absolutely necessary. It is not absolutely necessary. But you, the people, who I'm talking about, allow that to happen. You are saying that people's lives are so valueless that if someone wants to manipulate them or control them or take advantage of them and are willing to exercise powers against them by whatever measure necessary to achieve their ends, and you <coughs> accept it, that's ugly. That is absolutely ugly. And I don't care how you justify it by patriotism. I don't care how you justify it by just letting things be. 
I don't care how you try to justify it. It is ugly. Ugly. And when you start limping, that might just be a sign of your ugliness. And I feel comfortable in saying that because I'm ugly. I feel comfortable to say in saying that because all of us, we know who we are, are ugly. We exist ugly. And we know that inside of us, just because what I have said to you right now, you have identified ugliness within yourself. You know, you have allowed people to live without jobs. You have allowed people to live within this country, struggling, trying to survive. You have followed a system that has said that that is okay. And since that system says it's okay and it exists, apparently you, my friends, sisters and brothers, are saying that it's okay. It is not okay in light of the fact that it does not have, have to exist. In light of the fact that the fruits that have been created by the people of this country are the products of the efforts of the people of this country collectively putting it together that entitles each of them by their participation in the process to extract from these resources as they need or see fit. And that goes for all who participate. That's why it is absolutely necessary that everybody has absolute access to education so they can be better at whatever it is that they do. That they should have access to the best health care system that is Americanly possible to present and have. And having done these things, they must have the assurance that what they have chosen to offer back, that which gives them pleasure and completeness in participating in the process of delivering goods and services to the reservoir so that the people may be blessed. Now, what's wrong with that? But we don't do that. We don't do that. We want to hustle. Dog eat dog. I'm smarter than he. Let's compete. All of these old darn tools. Ugly man's tools. And we end up being as ugly as we are. And dis as decrepit as we are. Through the end of our lives. Why? Because we are so dirty hearted inside. We have to change our ways inside ladies and gentlemen. And I'm telling you this for a 100,000th time this thing. Nothing on this earth was created outside of the power of the almighty God which we cannot identify with our senses except that we are smart enough, wise enough to know that everything exists because of that power. And if that's the case, then neither of us own anything. So these things that are here are just there for our usage. And everybody needs some portion of whatever it is that comes from it. And everybody got something that they can offer to create, to develop whatever it is that their hearts desire, that our hearts desire. And to the, such, to the, the magnitude that there is an abundance. And so they must be guaranteed by one another, by you and I, that they will be able to access and deliver. They must be. Why? Because that's part of creating heaven on earth. That's, and that comes from being beautiful inside. That comes from being beautiful inside. That's when we can look at anybody. And if they're in pain, we can feel that pain immediately. But we don't just feel the pain. We want to help get rid of the pain. And we're willing to find out whether it's an individual or whether it's a group of people or a nation of people. What is it that is required to bring relief? But not just 
relief from the pain, but take you to a level of accomplishment equal to the pain you've experienced. What's wrong with something like that? Don't you think that's beautiful? But you can't think that's beautiful because you don't believe in God. Let me tell you the truth. I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. This will make you angry. This will make you angry. But you do not believe in God more than you fear to go against the norm. You believe in God, but your fear of going against the norm is greater than your love for God. And as a consequence, these cities and towns and people are just going through hell. Is there any amongst you who want to stand up? I have to believe that there are people all across this world that's taking the initiative, that are trying to stand up. And they are waiting for a moment in time when they can, all of us can stand together in a multitude and maybe don't have to die. You see, people don't know enough about death yet to readily accept, well, I'll die and look forward to it. And so as long as that threat is there, they have to think twice, they do think twice before going to that route. And having a chance to think twice on that second thought, they think that maybe just a little of this, a little of that, and the people will come together in the masses and take that step and accomplish this. And they can, and we can all enjoy without having to die. But the truth of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen, until we are willing to die, until we are dying for the reason, why should anyone really, really ever trust it? You see, we must see an end to it. This activity is ugliness. It is ugliness inside of us that's reflected in our poverty, in our cities and towns and destructions and lack of health care and lack of jobs. That is all ugliness in our ability to go, and go to war for this reason or that. And it's all ugliness that has reflected us when we can't stand up and walk and breathe on this and that. And yes, it sounds maybe harsh for me to say these things, but they are real. We see them every day. Hospital, walk to the hospital, you'll see people going through all kinds of changes, young as well as old. And we have to ask ourselves, look, ladies and gentlemen, if we were focused on loving one another, we would have an opportunity because the master is willing to discover whatever those prerequisites are that would give us a youthful look as long as we live, a dynamic look without the aging. And if we age, we only look better and don't get decrepit again. all of the things I've just been talking about. That's what you who could walk like that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the two that I could mention were killed. And nobody has been killed later. Why hasn't anyone else been killed later? because there has never been any more free people talking. When I say these things to you, I must say to the preachers, the preachers are not fr free. Most of them that are licensed are controlled by the system that they must, if they were truly serving God, not represent. See, I want, and, I, and I'd love to say this every time I get the opportunity to, my concern is this. When you understand and know God and you accept God because you understand not only that God is your maker, but you begin to see the difference in God's way of thinking as opposed to humanity's way of thinking. Where others are going through struggles, you see a path that are without the struggles. 
path that has been accomplished by the power of the Almighty that suggests to us, walk in these steps and thy will be done on earth. And so what is being challenged is to do or not to do. Well, we haven't done. We haven't done. But the fountain of youth rests in our ability to start cleaning up our inside, getting rid of all that ugliness and hate that's in us, and replacing it with love. Let it be that each of us here in the United States of America want for ourselves and want for every other American to have the same results in their wants as we ourselves want. That satisfaction guarantee. Let it be said that the United States of America decided that they were going to do things right and they were willing to disavow or disobey any laws that violated right. They would, those laws that fall in line with right, they would definitely do right, meaning they would be obeying the laws. But it is the duty and the responsibility of those special people who love God that much that God can speak through them to you to stand up against every law, stand up against, let me repeat that, against every law that denies what is right. See, if you're going to say you're going to represent God, then God is not like America. America tries to shape God into all kinds of things like politics, Republicans and Democrats. Everybody got a God. You got on the battlefield, you got two four opposing forces. Each one of them got a God, probably the same God. And think that God is there represented. God is not represented in any junk like that. That is not God. That is sickness. That is one that has accepted deception. The truth of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen. The earth is not overcrowded. And the resources necessary to maintain 10 billion people are here for 10,000 years. And in the process of that time, being birthed is an additional quantity that's ready to keep us going because that is the way that the Master designed it. This thing about robbing our children is a whole bunch of crap. It's a lie. You can't rob your kids that way. The way you rob your kids is deny them the truth. Deny them the right to life. Other than that, they'll see through that as well. And so I say to you, do what's right even if it's in violation of the law. And be for real, because if you're for real, they're going to punish you because it is their duty and it is their responsibility to punish you unless they change. And if they have not changed, they are going to, to, punish, to punish you. But I want you to know the reason that it is so wonderful and require is that requirement is that you're real it's because when they punish you, it isn't actually punishment. They are rewarding you. They are rewarding you for the work for God that you have done. You have done a work for God so great, and they are so upset with it because it threatens their control over human beings that they will do this to you. But because God is God, you get joy, something that the world can't give you and the world can't take.